Lewis, your host for HFK Presents 5 Minutes of History. Guten Tag! <laughs> As Oktoberfest winds down in Munich, I thought it would be the perfect time to talk about a Prussian general who helped the Americans win the Revolutionary War. And his name? Baron Wilhelm von Steuben. Von Steuben was actually a captain in the Prussian army until he was uh, released under speculative uh, circumstances. And he then searched around Europe for another army to fight for. He tried the French army, the British army, and several other smaller armies, and nobody wanted him. While in France, he happened to fall into none other than Benjamin Franklin, who was looking for military minds to help lead the Revolutionary War for the uh, new United States of America. He sent letters of introduction, along with von Steuben, to America, where von Steuben was able to give those letters to General Washington. And on Benjamin Franklin's recommendation, that Prussian officer became part of the American Revolution. He did some amazing things that were unheard of at this point in time, at least for the uh, colonists that were fighting for independence. You know what he did? He spent the winter at Valley Forge straightening out the army, so to say. What von Steuben did was teach them how to fight in a regimented fashion. He also taught them to take commands and to issue commands. But what he most did that was most important of all was that he moved the kitchens and the latrines away from each other and put the camp in between the two. Special note, latrines always on the downside of the hill. He improved the sanitary conditions. Up to that point in time, men went wherever they needed to go. And if they happened to skin an animal, they left the remains right there in the middle of the road. He also put all of the uh, tents in order based on your rank and taught an elite group of officers how to teach others and instruct those so that eventually each man was taught by someone up the ranks. He put all of these instructions into a book that was called Order of the uh, Soldiering of the United States Army, which was more finally known as the Blue Book. And that blue book was translated, because von Steuben didn't speak English, by none other than Alexander Hamilton, who could speak French, which was another language von Steuben spoke. He spoke German and French. You know what else he did? He gave out his orders in German. And guess what? Nobody understood. He actually gave them out in German and then in French, and then instructed a captain by the name of Walker to translate those, those instructions. The instructions happened to be many curse words, and Walker had a difficult time translating because he didn't want to offend. Von Steuben said it was necessary so they would understand the importance of the message. Long story short, by the end of the uh, winter encampment in Valley Forge, Von Steuben had straightened out the sanitary con conditions and made a fighting army and put together a book that the army could fight by from that point on, a book that was followed for many years to come and was the basis of how our military is established to this point in time. At the end of the war, von Steuben sadly was sick and missed out on some of the last battles, but was there at the end in Yorktown as a uh, flank to Washington. After the war, he became a United States citizen, spent the rest of his years here in the United States in New York, where he settled on some land that was commissioned to him because of his rank as general in the Re Revolutionary War. But surprise of surprises, von Steuben didn't have money to support the land because Congress was slow to pay on his promises to the military men. Some things never change, do they? Well, eventually, with the help of Alexander Hamilton, he was given his pension, which was about $2,500 a year, and was able to retire because of a friendly mortgage arranged by Hamilton himself. Von Steuben stayed in the United States for the rest of his life, and he passed away back in uh, 1794 in his house in New York. Way to go, Von Steuben. Oh, my goodness. I've been talking for quite some time, haven't I? Speaking of time, do you know what time it is? It's time for trivia. And here's today's trivia. What is a song that has been played as ragtime, Dixieland bands, um, Al Jolson and Louis Armstrong have sung this song, and the uh, University of Wisconsin plays it at every touchdown, and Texas A&M uses a portion of it when they have a victory celebration. 
Not to mention, the Hooterville Volunteer Fire Department had only one song they could play on Green Acres, and it was this song. You know what song it is? It has to do with its origins based on a tragedy in Chicago. I'll give you a hint. Here's the first verse. Late at night when we were all in bed, Oh, Lady Le Leary put a lantern in the shed. The cow kicked it over and winked her eye and said, There'll be a hot time in the old town tonight. Woohoo! That's right. There'll be a hot time in the old town tonight is based on the Great Chicago Fire, which took place on October 8th of 1871. It was a Sunday night. The fire started in Mrs. O'Leary's barn and headed in a northeasterly direction, and the fire went on for three days. It ended on a Tuesday morning because of rain and a large open area to the north side of the city. That's about where the south end of Lincoln Park Zoo is to this very day. It burned a third of the city, killed over 300 people, 100,000 people lost their homes, and over $200 million worth of damage were caused by the Great Chicago Fire. Now, the reason that it spread so quickly was because most of the buildings were made of wood, and it had been a very dry, very dry summer and fall, along with the fact that the fire department was exhausted from fighting a fire about eight blocks away the day before. That location actually is where now the famous Willis Tower is, one of the tallest buildings in the world. Some of you may still call it the Sears Tower, but that's where this fire was the day before the Great Chicago Fire. You know what's on the site of the Great Chicago Fire now? I'll let you know. It is the Chicago Fire Department's Fire Academy where they train all first responders and firefighters to fight and succeed in saving people in blazes in Chicago. It's kind of a memorial to the worst uh, fire disaster in the city that now that's where the firefighters all learn to save other people from tragedies like that. Well, I am just out about a time. I hope you learned a little something with my song there. Please don't write in saying that I can't carry a tune. I already know that. But if you do want to write in with a question about something in history, please do send it to me at info at hfkpresents.com. And if you can't remember all that, do this. Go to my website, www.hfkpresents.com. There's a link there that you can send me a message and ask me a question on history. And while you're looking around on that website, I've got to tell you there's a couple of cool things. There's a lot of videos like this one here that tell you all about history. And there's also another place, a shopping cart. I've got a shopping cart on my site. And what's in that shopping cart? This, the book that me and my wife just finished printing. And it is called Mistakes Happen, A Historical Guide to Overcoming Adversity. Now, I know that there's a lot of adversity out there, and people think it's never been like this before. It has. And in our book, we tell you all about it, how some of our founding fathers and mothers overcame adversity to succeed in founding this country. You can buy it on our website for the low, low cost of $10. Listen, I really am just about out of time. So if you want this book, stop by the website, fill out the form, Hit the shopping cart, and we'll get a copy out to you. If you want me to come to your school or to your uh, organization, send us an email through the website. I will go wherever you need me. And I have to tell you one other thing. Watch out. History happens where you least expect it. This is Terry Lynch with HFK Presents 5 Minutes of History. Wait for next time when we'll start haunting you for Halloween. <laughs>